a hill that can change colors. As strange and impossible it may seem, it's not from a children's fairy tale. It actually exists, and it changes colors every day from violet to red to yellow to orange to even black. There is nothing magical or supernatural about this hill. Well then, how does it change colors? The truth is that it's actually just a giant chameleon which is posing as a hill. I'm just kidding. But then, if it's not a chameleon changing colors, what is it then? To better explain this, let me tell you a little story. In 1873, a traveler named William Goose assembled a party to travel and to find the remnants of Olympus. The last bit was obviously a lie, but after some time traveling, they got tired and decided to camp. And that's when they saw a hill that was violet in color. They didn't think much of it, but after a few hours of rest, when they looked at the hill again, the color had changed to red. They were baffled by this discovery and thought it was some divine sorcery which made them run away in fear. No, that didn't happen. Actually, we don't know what happened after that, but they gave it a name. They named it the Ayers Rock because of the Prime Minister of Australia in those days who was named Henry Ayers. I wonder why they didn't name it after themselves. Anyways, it's mostly known as Uluru nowadays. The reason it changes color is pretty logical and actually as simple as trying to understand a woman, which we know can be pretty hard, but this is actually simpler than that. The first thing you need to know is that it's not a hill. It's actually a rock. Not only that, it's the biggest fucking monolith rock in the world and it's made of sandstone. Well, how does that matter in changing colors? Well, it does. Let's elaborate on that a bit more. There are many factors which make the spectacular changes of color possible in this hill, such as the weather, angle of sun, and it also depends on whether it's sunrise or sunset. But the main reason is Tobey Maguire himself. No, the main reason is the sandstone. Not the sandstone itself, but the mineral particles present in the sandstone. These mineral particles in sandstone perform a process called the selective absorption and reflection. In this process, the mineral particles in sandstone can enhance the sun's rays and reflect back different parts of the color spectrum. But how do they do that exactly? As all of you know that light consists of a lot of colors. So what it simply does is absorb most of the colors and reflect back one single color which it didn't absorb. But shouldn't these minerals then just reflect that single color throughout the day? Like how does it determine which color to reflect? Well the answer is the predominance of colors in the sun's rays. At the time of sunrise the sun rays have more of orange color because the other colors are mostly scattered by the dust particles present in the atmosphere. Now, the mineral particles not only reflect back the orange color from the sun rays, but also amplify it which make the hill appear orange. During the morning and the evening, this hill appears to be orange and red respectively due to the predominance of these colors in the sun rays. During midday, other colors are also present in the sun rays, and hence it changes its color accordingly. Well, now you know why it changes colors. It's going to cost you one subscribe and a like.